and welcome to a quick and dirty edition of Ben's Junk. Because even Ben's Junk isn't above the occasional quickie. So anyway, this is really a prelude to tomorrow's video. And it's the 10th anniversary special of Archive, and it's regarding AM Stereo. But there wasn't any great place to go over the main piece of gear used in that video. So I just wanted to take a few minutes here and just go completely off the cuff and talk about this. This is a Sony SRF A100. It dates to, I think, 1983. And it's pretty self-explanatory, but again, it just doesn't fit anywhere in the <laughs> documentary I made. So uh, yeah, let's just kind of take a quick rundown. I'll do a very quick demo. I mean, there isn't much to it. But uh, this is a very nice radio, and uh, a viewer sent this to me uh, not too long ago, a uh, high-rolling Patreon donor, because uh, if you donate enough in Patreon, I will do a Ben's Junk for you, as long as you can send me the item or I have it or there's something we can work out. But anyway, uh, yeah, let's take a look at this thing. And this is apparently a pretty sought-after radio, and I think I can see why. Uh, it's... Uh, probably the best performing AM radio I've ever uh, been around. So anyway, let's start with just a rundown of the controls here. So we got power, of course, volume and tone, which I do find myself having to ride. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a neutral to that, to my ear. And then we can switch between uh, local and DX listening, distant listening, and then you can switch between AM, AM stereo, and FM. We got the tuning wheel, got a little thing to uh, put a, a wrist strap or just some sort of uh, secure thing, if you like, on it. And then we've got a switch here, because this kind of does it all. Uh, there were effectively four stabs uh, at the time for AM stereo. And by 1983, the de facto leader had become CQAM, but that in and of itself was three compatible systems. And so if you actually uh, read the bottom here, you can see that Harris, Magnavox, and Motorola, which is CQAM, uh, all got mashed into one. And then the B selection is Con Hazeltine which was a dead duck uh, a few years after this radio came out. So unfortunately, there's no great way of doing a Con Hazeltine thing unless you can uh, get access to a transmitter, and I would assume you'd, it would be a fully licensed thing. So anyway, yeah, it's the Switch, and I've had it at A the whole time for CQAM. Uh, there is a spot for an AC adapter. This did not have one sent with it. Haven't tried it. Uh, I'd have to find the specs for it and just stick a generic one in there, but I, I just haven't needed it. This thing's been pretty efficient on the battery front. Uh, three double A's, and I think I've swapped them once since I've had it, and I've put some decent time onto this thing. But anyway, uh, we do have a headphone jack, and it's a good full proper stereo headphone jack, so you can... Uh, listen, or in my case, I can run out and do a direct feed recording. And people used to do direct feed recordings with these things back in the 80s and 90s. And they're good. I look them up online. There's a few, uh, I think V Westlife has a few of them. So, um, yeah, anyway, let's just do a, a quick demo here. Now, my acid test for radios, and I've mentioned this before, is can it pick up uh, within the realm of FM? Can it pick up 98.7 KISD based out of Pipestone, Minnesota, about an hour away from me? And this one cannot, unless I'm in a very specific spot and my hand is on the antenna. Uh, it is tuned to that station at the moment. Obviously, there's nothing there. Now, of course, the lights may be interfering a bit. So, uh, if you'll give me a quick moment here. Well, actually it helped a little.
Rolling Stones at the moment. But uh, it's AM where this particular radio really shines. I guess I'll just take a quick ride up the, the FM here. One of the million country stations here. Three in a row. Now this thing does have a tendency of mashing stations together, uh, especially between like 101.1 and 103.1, it will mash everything together. There's, a, if I hit it just right, there's a spot where I can hit three or four stations simultaneously. And uh, it's regardless of what setting I'm in. So it's a, a bit of a quirk, but uh, I'd, I'd call this a, uh, a city radio on the FM front. Now, as far as AM goes, this was designed for stereo use, of course, and I'm sure somebody paid a pretty penny for it at the time. But uh, this is kind of a good fringe radio, I've noticed. Um, I, I'll just do a very quick sweep here. I don't know my AM stations that well. Actually, if we go back to the ball game. <laughs> Flicking back and forth between standard AM and AM stereo. And it does, it gives a slight kick, I've noticed, to uh, the signal in stereo mode, whether or not it's an actual CQAM station or not. But you can kind of tell when there is an AM stereo station, even if it's not proper stereo. Uh, the frequency response gets right up on the borderline with FM. Now bear in mind, there's only, I think, four AM stations in Sioux Falls. I could be wrong, but at, at any given time in my car, uh, you know, probably the best test, I can only get about that many. Anything else is from usually Minnesota, maybe down in Sioux City or something, but I can kind of hit all sorts of AM stuff that I just don't seem to get otherwise. Neighborhood dealer, Pfeiffer's implant. She's more likely to finish high school. I think 13 or 14. Fairgrounds tomorrow night. On the 4th of July, we've got one heck of a fireworks show set for 10 p.m. at the WH Lion Fairgrounds. Now, if you That is Sioux Falls. But yeah, it's uh, it's a lot more than I normally see. And the bottom end of the AM dial is just completely dead, I think, in this region. So anyway, let me at least uh, pop a light back on. So really, that was all there is to say about this particular radio. Uh, this particular one has a few dents and stuff, but it hasn't affected its performance. Uh, I, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much, Finn, for sending this in. I, I just think this is a terrific little radio. And otherwise, I guess I'm just going to pull the plug here, so to speak, because I can't think of anything else to say about it. So with that, uh, tune in tomorrow for the 10th anniversary of Archive, the proper special.